You've explained the root cause of the desolation in the religious world quite clearly. But you say that God becomes flesh in the last days to do the work of judgment. Does this have basis in the Bible or fulfill biblical prophecies? Without a biblical basis, we shouldn't be so quick to believe it. Yes, we believe in the Lord through the Bible. Whether the Lord is returned is a big question, one we should determine using the Bible. That's right. Actually, there's clear prophecy in the Bible, God becoming flesh in the last days to do the work of judgment. Let's read some verses in the Bible. In Acts chapter 17, verse 31, it says, Because he has appointed a day, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Next, in John chapter 5, verse 27, And has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Also, in John chapter 5, verse 22, For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. This shows us clearly that in the last days, God becomes flesh as the Son of Man to do the work of judgment to men. The Son or Son of Man in the prophecies must refer to the incarnate flesh. The work that judgment begins at the house of God done by Almighty God of the last days fulfills the prophecy that the Son of Man will do the work of judgment in the last days. This is an undeniable fact. I have read the same Bible verses, but I ignored the word Son of Man. Lord Jesus spoke clearly and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Doesn't that mean that the incarnate God will come as the Son of Man to judge? It's so clear to me now. God's work of judgment in the last days is done through the incarnate God. That fulfills the prophecy. Keep listening. Any major incidents of God's work are prophesied in the Bible. And there are quite a few relating to the second coming of the Lord Jesus and God's work of judgment. But we should understand that prophecies only tell people what will happen. They are reminders for people to be aware and to seek and investigate in the last days so they won't be abandoned or eliminated by God. That's all the prophecies can do. The prophecies can't help us to know God's work, nor understand the truth, or help people obey God or increase people's love for God. So, our best course is to directly investigate the words expressed by Almighty God and the work done by Him. From these determine whether they are truly God's voice and expression. That is the most important course of action. This is much more realistic and useful than searching for a basis in biblical prophecies. Yes, that sounds more practical. We all know that when the Lord Jesus came to do work, the disciples and believers who followed Him, they only recognized Him gradually through his work and words, that the Lord was Christ, the Messiah prophesied. The priests, scribes, and Pharisees who knew religious law and studied the Bible knew that the Lord Jesus' word is the truth, has authority, and has power. But because they hated the truth, they not only refused to follow the Lord Jesus, they used the letters and regulations in the Bible to oppose and condemn the Lord Jesus. And finally, nailed him to the cross. This shows us the Bible can't lead or guide us to accept the return of the Lord. For those who wait the Lord's return, the Bible only serves as corroboration. The clever virgin doesn't welcome her groom using the Bible. When she hears her groom's voice, she ascertains it is God's voice and goes to meet her Lord. Those who rely on biblical prophecy rather than seeking God's voice and who reject and condemn Almighty God's work in the last days, they are the most foolish virgins, those who God will abandon and eliminate.
So the clever virgin recognizes that her groom has come because she hears God's voice. This is so enlightening. We would never have figured it out. We have to be like the clever virgin. Hear if the voice of Almighty God is truly that of God. If we can recognize the voice of God and God's work in the words of Almighty God, then we are truly blessed. Yes, the Lord Jesus said, My sheep, hear my voice. We need to study Almighty God's words and see if they are the true words of the returned Lord Jesus. That's the most important. Thank the Lord. In the past, I thought reading the Bible, praying, and working hard for the Lord made me a clever virgin. But today I realize the most important part of being a clever virgin is learning to recognize God's voice. If that's the case, then what we should do now is listen more to Almighty God's words and talk about them more. And naturally, we'll know if Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. Thanks be to God. Now let's read a passage from Almighty God. Let me read it. All right. Can you be such that you accept without question all the work of the Holy Spirit? If it is the work of the Holy Spirit, then it is the right stream. You should accept it without the slightest misgivings, rather than picking and choosing what to accept. If you gain some knowledge from God and exercise some caution against Him, is this not an act truly uncalled for? What you ought to do is acceptance of, without the need for further substantiation from the Bible, any work so long as it is that of the Holy Spirit. For you believe in God to follow God, not to investigate Him. You should not search out further proof for me to show that I am your God. Rather, you ought to discern whether I am of benefit to you. That is the key. Even if you have found out much irrefutable proof within the Bible, it cannot bring you fully before me. You are one who lives within the confines of the Bible and not before me. The Bible cannot help you to know me, nor can it deepen your love for me. To discern whether Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus, we cannot rely solely on evidence in the Bible. Most important is whether the words expressed by Almighty God are the truth. Whether what Almighty God expresses is God's disposition and what He has and is. Whether Almighty God's words are the truth, the way, and the life necessary to man. Whether they relieve people's confusion about belief in God whether they save people from their corrupt satanic dispositions and satanic natures, and whether they can save people from Satan's influence, achieve purity, and enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the most important factor. The words of Almighty God are very practical and very clear. The Bible can't help us know God's work in the last days. The Jewish Pharisees searched for evidence of the Lord Jesus' work in the Old Testament. And in the end, they crucified him. If we only rely on the Bible for evidence of God's work in the last days and don't investigate the words of Almighty God, aren't we making the same mistake as the Pharisees? That's right. We have to be very careful. We can't let ourselves follow the religious pastors in judging and condemning Almighty God's work. Or else, we'll commit the terrible sin of re crucifying God and be punished and cursed by God. It says in the Bible, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We have to listen to the Word of Almighty God, and we'll know whether the words expressed by Almighty God are the voice of God, whether they're the truth, the way, and the life. If we don't listen or investigate, even if the Lord Jesus has returned, we won't recognize Him. That's right. If we don't read more of Almighty God's words, we'll be easily deceived by the religious antichrists and follow them in judging and condemning God. That would be very dangerous for us. Almighty God's words reveal people so much. Where Almighty God's work of the last days is concerned, if people don't investigate, seek, and accept it, they are judging, condemning, resisting it. There is no middle way.
We can be clever virgins or foolish ones. It's up to us to choose. We should be very careful. God will let all who are in search see the light again and the glory had in Israel see. I'll make you have a taste of being unable to neither seek life nor death. God, these days you are leading me step by step and giving me faith and strength with your word, keeping me alive. God is the source of life in all its forms, because the truth expressed by God is the fountain of the waters of everlasting life.